All right, so this skill is going to be focusing on how to provide a patient with enteral feeding. This particular patient has a NG tube in, and this, as you can see, is a Salem, a Salem pump tube, um, but it can be utilized for tube feedings as well, especially when the tube feeding is short term. So just a few, um, few pieces of information regarding uh, NG tube. First of all, when a patient has an NG tube before you are going to put anything into that tube, you have to make sure that it is still in the correct spot. So NG means that it goes through the nares into the stomach. So you wanna make sure that it's staying in the stomach. There's a couple of ways that you can verify placement um, and that would be per your facility's policy. That would either be by doing pH testing and that, that's one way of doing it. The other way that you can do it is by measuring the tube. So once it's been verified that it's in the stomach using a x-ray, then um, you would go ahead and mark at the tube where right up to the nares where it's inserted and measure that. So you would go ahead and measure how long the tube is coming out of the nose to the end and then you would document that in the patient's chart so that each time a nurse goes in to put something in the tube, they can measure it to make sure that, that that measurement stays consistent so that we know that the tube hasn't moved. All right, we also, before we wanna put anything in the tube is we wanna do a gastrointestinal assessment. So that would include making sure that you listen to the lung, um, listen to the bowel sounds and make sure that those are present. You also wanna ask the patient if they're having any bloating or cramping or maybe diarrhea and then the other thing you want to do is make sure that you're looking at their, the nares and making sure that they're not swollen, everything looks patent, um, or if they're not having a lot of discomfort. All right, so when we're going to give tube feeding through an NG tube, um, obviously you want to make sure that you check the provider's orders and you want to make sure that you have the correct tube feeding formula. And that you would do the same as you with any, any medication. You would double check with your MAR and make sure you do your checks. Um, and then if you, when you come into the patient's room and you're ready to give them the tube feeding, you also want to make sure that you check their um, ID to make sure that you verify their name and date of birth and also any allergies that they might have. Okay. All right. So now I think we're going to begin. So I have all my equipment here. Um, it's good practice to have some type of um, either a towel or a um, unabsorbable pad to put underneath where you're gonna be giving the, the feeding. So you wanna make sure that you know if you're doing it this way that you have the pad under there. For our purposes, we're gonna be doing this via kind of a simulated Way because we don't want the mannequin to, the mannequin isn't capable of taking in tube feeding. So we're gonna use this as our simulation here. All right, okay, so we have all that. And then we're gonna have a 60 um, cc Lurlock syringe, not Lurlock, but I'm sorry, which is regular CC, 60 cc syringe. And it should be that large. Um, you don't want any smaller syringes, just stick with the 60 cc because of the pressures pressure gradients. You also want to check your policy as far as using tap water versus sterile water. Um, I'm using sterile water and also you might want to have a uh, clamp um, to put into your tube feeding if you don't have one and your measuring tape before you come into the room. Okay so now I'm going to go ahead wash my hands again quick and put my gloves on because I verified placement and so the tube is actually in the right place. It's in the stomach. I've already done my GI assessment and asked my patient questions regarding that. Okay. I'm going to be um, providing the tube feeding formula via gravity. Um, you will also note that we have uh, pumps, tube feeding pumps that we can use that are similar to IV pumps that actually pump the, the fluid in. However, I'm gonna do this by gravity. All right, so we wanna make sure that our tube is patent. Um, so that means that we want to um, draw up 30 cc's of water 
and um, inject that into the tube to make sure that it's open and usable before we put the tube feeding in. And your sterile water, you just want to make sure it's not expired and it shouldn't be open for more than uh, 24 hours. Always label when you open it, the date and the time, so that you can keep it under that 24, 24 hours or under. All right, so I, I basically just filled up a medicine cup with 30 cc's of water. You may see that there are um, specific containers that you can use too to put your sterile water in instead of drawing it right out of the container. You probably don't wanna do that. All right, so what we're gonna do retract myself here. We're going to take the plunger, just show you that make sure it's nice and flexible there and we're going to go ahead and draw up our 30 cc's and there might be some air in there. You can just push that air out so you don't want to give the patient too much air. All right and then I'm going to take out this little clamp thing here so that I can go ahead and check for patency. So basically I'm just flushing the tube with the sterile water to make sure that it's fluent so I can put my tube feeding in there. And so after you put something in you always want to clamp it afterwards so that it doesn't backflow back out. So always clamp after you're done. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I've checked and did all my checks on my formula and I, I noticed that what I'm going to have to give this patient um, is basically this 30, 60 cc's of this per my order. And I'm going to do this by gravity. So I'm going to take out the plunger since I'm doing it by gravity. Keeping it clamped, your tubing clamped, you're going to go ahead and put this syringe right onto the tubing. Okay, and I'm not sure how this is going to work for me here real well here, but I'm going to go ahead and, um, excuse me, I'm just going to grab this here real quick. And I'll measure the amount on my syringe to be most accurate. Okay, so basically you're just going to pour that in. It's, it's not on, let's just say it's still clamped. Okay, so then when you're ready to go in, you unclamp it. And I put the 60 cc's in, and I'm just basically administering it by gravity and it'll go into the stomach that way versus being pumped through with a pump. Okay, when that goes in, I'm going to clamp it. So you would clamp it, take this off, and then I'd have to flush it one more time after I'm done giving the feeding to keep the to patent. Just put this over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and flush it with 30 more cc's. So always flush before and after you're administering anything. So I got my 30 cc's there. Okay. And then I can also flush by gravity as well. So when I initially did it, I did it by you know, force by pushing it in, but you can also flush with gravity as well. So I'm going to flush with my 30 cc's and let that go through. Okay, so now the flush is completed. So I'm done with that. So you want to make sure it's clamped. Okay, and now the patient's just had their tube feeding. If this patient was hooked up to suction, because you can also add this to suction, this type of NG tube, you would want to wait at least 30 minutes to an hour before you hook that up to suction, because otherwise it'll just suck all that food that you just gave. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to again ask the patient if they're having any cramping or feeling bloating, um, and document that I administered the tube feeding, how much was administered, what type, make sure that that's all documented correctly. I'm gonna ask the patient if they have any questions and I'm gonna lock and lower the bed. I'm gonna put the alarms on if needed and I'm going to put the call light by the patient and the tray table. And then that concludes the um, tube feeding by gravity.